What's up everyone, it's your boy Rad 89 here bringing you another video. For today's video, we're going to be going into another Universal Monster review. Today we're going to be talking about The Invisible Man from 1933. This is based on an H.G. Wells novel, and this one I was excited to dive into because this was a first time watch for me. I had never seen this movie before, and this one, like I said, was exciting to dive into because I'm a fan of Hollow Man. I've seen the actual remake of this movie, The Invisible Man. I've seen Hollow Man and I've seen a bunch of renditions of this movie, but I've never ever seen this original. So this is going to be my thoughts on this film. Kind of positives, negatives if I have any. And like I said, we're going to find out where it falls in the tier ranking of the Universal Monster films. So let's do this. Roll it. <laughs> So The Invisible Man from 1933, this is directed by James Whale, and this one, like I said, it was a first time watch for me. This one stars Claude Rains, Gloria Stewart, and William Harrigan. So what's really exciting to dive into this one, and like I said, this was a first time watch for me. I've seen many remakes of this and renditions of this story, but never seen this original one. And to be honest, diving into this film, I was quite surprised at how much I enjoyed this film. First of all, the fact that they were able to pull off some of the special effects and visual effects that they did in this film really off the charts. They had to film multiple scenes multiple times because they had to do Claude Rains in like a black velvet suit in front of a black velvet background to capture that like not, you know, seeing him on screen and then film it with other people and then kind of overlay the images so I thought that was really cool and when you watch it still to this day in 2024 the visual effects and special effects still hold up so that's one key positive is that I'm really quite impressed at the feat of what they were able to accomplish in this film in 1933. One other thing we must talk about is Claude Rains as our lead actor in this as our mad doctor you know who ends up finding a serum to make himself invisible but because of that serum and the chemicals that he injects himself with it makes him go insane and he goes on a mad killing spree so that's what like Claude Rains and the fact that having him in this film and casting an actor like this and knowing that it's mostly just a voice casting role you really only see Claude Rains on screen for about like I think the last 30 seconds of this movie you don't see his face at all until the very very end of this film I know spoilers sorry spoilers and everything but this film is from 1933 but yes to be able to ask an actor to do that you know back in the day that's kind of a weird ask like oh you're going to be in this film but you're not going to be physically in this film visual wise and see your face until the end it's going to be all voice acting and Claude Rains pulls it off for real like his acting in this film is part of the reason why I really really enjoy this movie another thing is his chemistry on screen with the other actors and actresses like Gloria and William and everything and the fact that like you said you really ever see them on screen together where you physically see him but his chemistry on screen is great because they added the love interest into this movie movie if you read the novel which I haven't read the original H.G. Wells novel but that original novel does not have a love interest in the film so that's something that they added to the movie so I think that's really or added you know what I mean into this movie so I think that's really cool because it adds a balance it adds something else to it and it adds more kind of a sympathy empathy type story for the character you know what I mean to be able to understand that there is somebody that he does care for but he does go crazy and kill a lot of people in this film. Add to that, that's one of my other favorite positives about this film is that this film is kind of like a really OG slasher. This is like a slasher film before Psycho, like for real. The Invisible Man has a very, very high body count in terms of the people that he kills on screen. Also, there's a train crash. There's off-screen kills. So yeah, the, the Invisible Man really does get his hands dirty. Another thing I want to praise about this film is the pace of this movie. Being a film that takes place in 1933, it has a fantastic pace and it doesn't like make me bored at all. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time and there's actually some funny moments in this film. Some comedy to kind of levity the horrible stuff that's going on. Like for one instance, there's a character that works at this kind of, you know, diner like, you know, hotel like kind of, you know, thing where the doctor ends up staying at and she is just hilarious 
hilarious. And especially when her husband ends up getting attacked by the Invisible Man, her reactions, her overacting is just off the charts for real. Like, this lady deserved an Oscar just because of, like, the campy acting that she gave. But, like, for real, yeah, there's some side comedy that really does, like said, land in this film. And I was, like said, quite surprised by the entertainment I had while watching this film. So for me, this one was quite an enjoyable, an enjoyable watch, and there's really not too many negatives with this film that I have at all, really. It does have quite a bit of a, like, a really fast ending, you know, the third act, it kind of just happens, you know what I mean? But that's not, that's like a softcore negative, because the the performances in here are fantastic, the story the the setting of it i like the sussex kind of snowy setting it's got this kind of dreary just kind of winter you know setting you know it doesn't really feel like fall time but it has a winter feel to it and i think the acting be, with the side characters with claude rains and everybody the chemistry really good there's some good horrible horrifying moments that are actually kind of scary but also some really funny moments you know what i mean so the invisible man i think is to me, quite underrated, I think, in terms of one of those Universal Monster movies, because I really don't see this one talked about as much or being as spooky or as scary as some of the other ones. This one actually came out on Halloween Day in 1933, so I find that quite fascinating as well. So I think there's a lot to love about this original Invisible Man from 1933, and like I said, I'm quite you know, kind of mad at myself that it took me this long to really dive into and watch this film and really enjoy it. Because like I said, I've seen Hollow Man, I've seen other renditions and remakes of this film and stuff like that, but never seen this version. And in terms of where this film's going to land in my tier ranking of the Universal Monster films, this one's going to land up right up there in the tier A right there with Frankenstein and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Like this one deserves all the praise it gets and I can understand why it's on that pedestal of Universal Monster films. Like I feel like this one's a little bit underrated so that's why like I said I did right up right up there tier A because this is one of my favorite and most enjoyable watches that I've had while diving into these films and like I said I got a lot of other reviews coming on the channel so be sure you like to the channel subscribe to the channel have that notification bell poked all that jazz because that's going to keep you up to date with all the videos that i post because i also got some special videos coming up with some special guests as well so you want to stay tuned to the channel but most importantly you all know what's up have a safe and happy day peace out